What you see here is a fully built 4.6 three valve Mustang that's been stroked out to a 5.0. It has full bolt-ons, which includes long tube headers, forward racing intake manifold, and an underdrive pulley. It also has Livernoy ported heads and Detroit rocker camshafts. Now the last dyno the Mustang did with this setup, it put down 368 wheel horsepower and 344 pound-feet of torque. And while that's pretty stout for a three valve in a world filled with LS3s, Coyotes, and Hemis, it's still just not enough power to hang with modern muscle cars. And yes, this Mustang should be making more power with its current setup, but I've learned that the combination of parts I had installed, specifically the non-OEM ported heads, most likely reduced my compression ratio to somewhere around 9.5. But that's a whole other story, and since the Mustang is going to get twin turbos, it's just not that big of a deal in the long run. Anyway, even though the car is already cammed, the Detroit Rockers are actually a pretty mild camshaft. They don't increase lift over stock, and they're designed to work with the stock springs and Ford's variable cam timing. And while they do provide a decent bump in power, they're really more about the sound. And I gotta say, they do have a pretty dope lope. <laughs> So to try to squeeze more naturally aspirated power out of this 3-valve, I decided to have the most aggressive cams I could find installed, Comp Cam Stage 3 cams, also known as 127-600s. They increase valve lift from 4500s to 55 on the intake side and 5600s on the exhaust side, which is an increase of about 22% over stock. These cams also require upgraded springs to prevent valve float and phaser limiters to prevent the valves from coming into contact with the pistons. So with these cams, the Mustang put down 387 wheel horsepower and 353 pound-feet of torque. Now I know an increase of 20 horsepower over the old cams doesn't seem like much, but peak power only tells half the story. We can see on this chart here from about 3200 RPM all the way to red line, the Mustang is making quite a bit more power and torque, especially above 5500 RPM, so not too shabby. Now before I race my buddy's Camaro, <laughs> I want to quickly talk about these cams and drivability. So my Mustang has 331 gears, which are a super long gear. I can hit almost 130 miles an hour in third. Basically, it's like having a four-speed transmission where fifth just acts like an overdrive gear. So I was pretty concerned that the combination of super long gears with super aggressive cams would lead to poor drivability, especially since the Detroit rockers consistently cause the car to buck and chatter under 10 miles an hour. But these cams actually drive quite a bit better than the rockers. There's a lot less bucking and getting off the line doesn't require you to carefully modulate the clutch each time. So somewhat surprisingly, you can actually mix long gears and aggressive camshafts on these Mustangs without significantly affecting drivability. All right, so the car I'm about to race is a 2015 Camaro SS that puts down 447 wheel horsepower and a whopping 442 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty impressive for an FBO pump gas LS3. It's tuned by the same guy that tunes my Mustang, but his whole shop focuses on LS builds, so I think it's fair to say that tuning LS engines is his specialty. Anyway, let's just roll the footage. So we did a few runs and they all pretty much turned out like that. It looks like I maybe have a fighting chance in first and second, but once I shift into third, no! but I do have a couple excuses that I think are valid. First, my gears are way too long. When I shift into third, my RPMs drop from 6,500 to 4,500 RPM, which takes me from 370 wheel horsepower to under 300. And second, my clutch is shot. 
In at least half of our races, I wasn't even able to shift into second. And it wasn't because I was missing the gear. You could literally hear the gears grinding as I tried to brute force it into second. Even when I was able to shift into second, you could still hear the gears grinding a bit. Regardless, a loss is a loss. But here's the deal. We just don't lose and give up, so this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna upgrade the clutch so I can power shift like a pro. I'm also gonna have 373 gears installed so I'm not doing airliner speeds in third gear. I'm gonna increase the red line to 7100 so when I upshift, the Mustang's RPMs fall back into an optimal spot in the power band. And I'm gonna do my best to squeeze another 14 horsepower out of this thing to get it into the 400s. Then of course, we'll run this race back and see how much of a difference those changes make. So if you're interested in seeing how all this plays out, you know what to do. And I hope you come back for the next one. Peace.